Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to simplify trigonometric identities. Um, and in this case, we have trigonometric identities. Um, they're going to involve a little bit more complicated steps than my last video. So remember identities, we're just trying to verify that the left side of the equal sign is equal to is the same as the right side of the equal sign. And But this one, this video is going to provide a little bit more insight as far as you know which side should we always pick. And in, in my first video that I showed, it was pretty obvious you know which was the more complicated side. And basically what you do is you choose the more complicated side, and you simplify so it looks like the other side. In this case, you can see that not always are my sides, you know, one is more complicated than the other. Some might have fractions, some might have addition or subtraction. So, and again, the one thing I want to reiterate is there's multiple different ways to solve this. I might choose one side, you might choose the other side. And that's perfectly OK. There's no one right answer to the way to do this. So I can't show every single step. I'm just going to show, oh, I'm sorry, I can't show every different way to verify the identity. I'm just going to pick one, either the one that I, the way that I view it, the way that I see the problem, or the one that just looks easiest to me. Um, but there are a couple steps, though, that I like you to think about um, when you're trying to identify the side. Now, in this first example, we can obviously see that this is much more difficult than my sine of theta. So I'm going to want to try to see if I can simplify this left side so it looks like sine of theta. So let's start with something fairly basic and kind of see where we're at. Now, this is a rational expression. So remember, whenever we have fractions, Let's get rid of the fractions, right? For our left side to look like the right side, I got to get rid of a fraction. It can't look like a fraction. So, so to get rid of the fraction here, I have cosecant of, of theta. Remember, whenever, um, whenever we want to get rid of something in the denominator, we multiply by its reciprocal. So the reciprocal of cosecant of theta is just going to be sine of theta. So if I multiply by the sine of theta on the top and on the bottom, sine of theta times cosecant of theta is going to multiply the 1 because they're reciprocal, um, reciprocal functions. So now I'm left with sine of theta times tangent theta times cotangent theta. And I want to show that that is equal to 1. So the best way to be able to do that is to rewrite everything in terms of sines and cosines. So by multiplying that, I have sine of theta times sine of theta over cosine of theta times cosine of theta over sine of theta. Now, the other thing for these examples, um, I think in my first video I showed, you know, make sure you always rewrite the identities. Well, some of these are going to involve a lot of different steps. So I'm not going to rewrite always the right side, because it will kind of, it's, you know, it's a little bit time intensive. But I am always going to write down the equal sign. So I can always follow what side I'm working on um, and then what the other side is supposed to be. So we know the equal sign to the right equal sign is always going to be sine of, sine of theta. I'm just not always going to write it for every these problems because, especially now when we're getting to like complicated sides, I don't want to keep on rewriting the other side. But I will include this equal sign because what I see with students is they just start rewriting one, one side and they kind of forget there's an equal sign there and they kind of lose track on what side they're working on. They move things around. So really be diligent about at least, if you're not going to write both sides, at least keep the equal sign so you know what it's equal to. Now, sine of theta, I can rewrite as over 1. And then basically what we see is we, now we're just going to divide out um, terms that are same in the numerator and the denominator. Let's use a different color here. So those divide to 1, those divide to 1. Therefore, I'm just left with sine of theta on the left side. And we know on the right side is also equal to sine of theta. So therefore, it is verified. All right, um, on this one, we have cosine of t times cotangent of t equals 1 minus sine squared of t divided by sine of t. So general rule of thumb is whenever you have a fraction, I always like to get rid of the fraction. Especially if the right, if one side is a fraction and the other side is not a fraction, I always start with the one that is a fraction. Okay? Um, it doesn't mean that's not right. It doesn't mean you can't re-simplify something on the other, other way. And actually, this one can be fairly simplified to rewrite in that one. Um, but I always just like to rewrite them as, as, our symbol, as um, the fraction. So the first thing I notice is I have sine squared, one, 1 minus sine squared. And I automatically know that's a part of my Pythagorean identities. Um, so 1 minus sine squared, we can rewrite as cosine squared of t over sine of t. Now again, that really doesn't help us out, right? I mean, that still doesn't look like this. This is still a fraction. However, what I can do is I can rewrite cosine squared of t as cosine of t times cosine of t all over sine of t. Then basically, I know I need to have a cosine times cotangent. Well, if I group the cosine of t over the sine of t, that is equal to cotangent of t. So therefore, I have cosine of t times cotangent of t. And that's equal to, obviously, cosine of t times cotangent of t. So now it has been verified. Um, <clears throat> 
Another one here, and this one actually kind of gives us a little diagram because on these two, um, we have operations of addition and subtraction. And basically, my two rules are when I'm looking in to figure out you know, which side is the more complicated, whenever I have a fraction, I always like to start with that one first. Or whenever there's an operation, like addition or subtraction, I always like to start with that side. So in here, you can see this one's addition, so that's why I'm going to start on this side. Here, I'm adding, so I'm going to start on that side compared to the other two sides. However, in this problem, um, again, I have a fraction and I have a subtraction. So what is going to be the other side? Again, it's just up to you, whatever side. What I would recommend is try one side, and then if that doesn't work, then go ahead and try the other side. Now, typically, adding and subtracting brings in a little bit more effort um, than fractions, but a lot of students just like don't doing like like not like doing fractions. But I think adding and subtracting when you have to get common denominators and so forth can sometimes be a little bit more tedious. So I am going to start with dealing with the fraction first. So again, just like I had over here, I want to get cosecant of x off the bottom. So I'm going to multiply by sine of x on the top and the bottom. Then um, I can't have a cotangent squared over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to my um, I'm going to look to my Pythagorean identities to rewrite cotangent squared of x. So therefore, by doing that, I have sine of x times, uh, let's see, cotangent of x, boom, boom, is going to be cosecant squared of x minus 1. Cosecant squared of x minus 1. OK, well now what I can do is I can apply the distributive property here. By applying this derivative property and rewriting this in terms of sines and cosines, I have sine of x times 1 over sine squared of x minus sine of x. Okay? Well, sine of x over 1 sine of x, that's going to divide one of those signs. So I'm still left with 1 over sine of x minus sine of x equals. And then obviously, hopefully, you can see that 1 over sine of x is the same thing as cosecant of x minus sine of x, which is exactly what we have here. I don't have enough room to write the answer, so I'm just going to write a check mark stating that, hey, it's been verified. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at our, my next side, or my next set of three, uh, three problems. So here we can see that I have addition. And whenever, again, as I mentioned, whenever you have addition or subtraction, I like to start with that side first, where this side is just multiplication. Um, so what I need to do, I need to, if there's adding, I need to combine them, right? Here is just one, here's just one term. So here, I've got to combine these two terms into one. So to do that, to better understand that, I've got to rewrite this in terms of sines and cosines. So really, this is 1 over cosine squared of x plus 1 over sine squared of x. And this is what I was talking about. Nobody really likes to do this, because now I have two rational expressions without common denominators. So I've got to get common denominators. So to do that, I need to multiply by cosine squared of x over cosine squared of x. And then over here, right, multiply by sine squared of x times sine squared of x. So in doing that, now what I'm left with is sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x all over sine squared of x times cosine squared of x. Well, again, by going back to our Pythagorean identities, we see that sine squared plus cosine squared is going to be equal to 1 over sine squared of x times cosine squared of x. Now, you can see that if I was going to rewrite it to make it look like there's like 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared. 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. And they're interchangeable. 3 times 4 is the same as 4 times 3, right? Sine times cosine is the same as cosine times sine. So you can rewrite them. But you can see that my uh, problem, again, is going to be verified. So I'll just switch those around so it looks the same. But you can see, again, this is verified. All right, in this example, um, again, you can see I have cosine of x plus sine of x times tangent of x equals secant of x. Um, before adding them, I'm going to convert them to sines and cosines and kind of see how that changes or see what that makes it look like. So I have cosine plus sine of x times sine of x over cosine of x. OK, so therefore, by when I go to add my fractions, I'm really adding cosine of x plus sine squared of x over cosine of x. So therefore, to add these two up, basically, I need to get my common denominator, which is going to be cosine. So I'll multiply by cosine of x on this side. I don't need to multiply by anything on the right side, because it already has a denominator of cosine of x. 
So therefore, then what I'm left with is cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x all over cosine of x. Well, cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x is obviously, again, equal to 1. So therefore, I have 1 over cosine of x, which is equal to secant of x, which again has been verified. As you can see, I'm supposed to equal to the verify. verify. All right. Um, Last example here is, again, we look at we have a fraction now, and then we have a product. And even with the subtraction inside one of those um, expressions. So again, the main important thing I always like to do is always look to get rid of your fractions, and then always look to get rid of your operations. So um, we could multiply this across, and then you see what happens, and that's perfectly fine. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is get rid of cosecant in my denominator. So to do that, just like I've done for all of these problems, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So therefore, I have sine of theta times. Now, what I'm going to do is cotangent of cube, cotangent cubed of theta, we really don't have anything for that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that apart into cotangent times cotangent squared. Because I know cotangent squared, we can use the Pythagorean identity. I don't really have anything for cotangent cubed. So I'm going to break this up, cotangent cubed up into cotangent of theta times cotangent squared of theta. Now, let's, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite these two in terms of sines and cosines. And since I know I need cosecant squared minus 1, I need to rewrite cotangent squared as its Pythagorean identity, which fortunately, I believe I already did that. Yeah, I already did that. You can already see that cotangent squared um, is the same thing as cosecant squared of x minus 1. So let's rewrite this so I have sine of theta times cosine of theta over sine of theta times uh, cosecant squared of theta minus 1. Well, now you can see that my sines divide out, and I'm just left with cosine of theta times cosecant squared of theta minus 1. And you can see that now that has been verified. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you verify trigonometric identities when you have to determine which side is going to be you know, more difficult. Thanks.